So when you first put on the headset in the assembly, you're faced with this huge air of mystery and wonder and sort of uncertainty of what's happening to you. You can hear things around the world. You can see this arid landscape of this desert in front of you. You're taken down into these corridors that you're traipsed through. You hear lots of conversations, not entirely sure what is being said or what's being talked about and, you know, shady characters sort of slipping past and with no answers really presenting themselves to start with. So the player's really left sort of wondering with all these things that they're looking at and what's about to happen to them. So in those first few minutes, we've used everything we've learned to make the things you see and hear in the assembly an exciting assault on the senses. So with the assembly, we wanted to create somewhere that wasn't just immersive, but where you truly forgot you were in the real world and you really believed you were somewhere else. The assembly's gameplay takes place in the organization's secret underground bunker. That's allowed us to focus on creating a very compact and highly detailed world that, when coupled with the power of VR, becomes immediately believable. realistic art style is actually just scratching the surface of what's needed to make a believable world in VR. What's more important is the completeness of that world and the consistency of the details that inhabit it. The players are encouraged to look into things, around things and underneath them. So you have to make sure that you model and texture all the details that they can get into. Underneath tables, behind sinks and inside every coffee cup. You want to make sure that the fidelity of that detail is there so they can pick up any answers or mysteries that they're trying to solve. But VR isn't just about graphics, it's equally about making amazing audio because you've got a headset on and you're listening to surround sound above and below you as well as behind and in front of you. It's really important to get that audio right. Audio in VR games needs a complete rethink. You could just use the same methods that you use it in a traditional flat screen game, but the biggest difference is detail. In an immersive environment like having a VR helmet on, everything is so much more intimate. You're so much closer to the action that you can just walk straight up to something, peer straight into it and get a lot more visual feedback. So we've got to match that with the audio in order to make things feel more real. The most important thing is positional audio. It's quite an early technology, but what it does, it, it utilizes real true positioning to the headset. So that means that when you look at something, you can hear exactly where it is in the room, pretty much. It also means that we can define the size of a room just how you would kind of in real life, so that you have things that are far away in exactly how you feel they would be in the, a room of those dimensions. So as an example, we've got these fridges in the game. You can open the doors, you can walk right up to them, but you can also look inside them. So from a, a VR audio perspective, it means we have to detail all the little elements, like the fans, the lights, everything, all these little tiny little bits. And then when you're finished, you can actually go around the back, listen to the, the hum of the generator, all the extra little fans and things on the back and things like that. It, even the most banal little objects in the game become kind of fascinating visually and from an audio point of view. So by creating a detailed world full of beautiful artwork and realistic sounds, we've made a game that will make people feel like they've been teleported from the real world to somewhere else. <laughs>